Good morning and welcome to our service at Sunbury Baptist Church this week. Hasn't it been a cold week? Amazingly cold. At a week when we were being shut down into stage four lockdown and all of those restrictions, we get snow. Um, my sense of humour says that God is helping us to stay indoors, but uh, I did get some footage of the snow. Uh, just beautiful snow drifting down onto the ground, even though it was fairly light. Um, what a week it's been. Anyway, we're here this morning to, uh, to worship the Lord and to hear his word. And it's our privilege this morning to have the Reverend Graham Semple, who is um, the regional pastor of the Baptist Union Victoria for our outer north uh, western metro area. So um, we look forward to having Graham. We're going to hear from him, just uh, sharing with us and then bringing the word this morning. Let's come before the Lord in prayer this morning and seek him. Um, this is the time when we gather as a family. Um, I'm hoping that most of you are still uh, trying to view the service at about 10 o'clock on a Sunday morning because it gives us a sense of, of uh, belonging together, of unity. And I know that some people watch it at different times of the week and that's fine, but it's just good to have a sense of uh, being in the same uh, time and being in the same spirit. Let's pray this morning. Father, we thank you for the joy we have in you. We thank you that you are sovereign over our lives. Uh, Lord, help us not to complain. Help us not to be people who, who find fault with others and with our leaders, but uh, continue to give you thanks and praise no matter what. Regardless of our circumstance, to lift up our voices to you, uh, as, as the hymn writer said, for a thousand tongues to sing your praise. So, Father, guide and direct us this morning as we come into your presence together to worship you, to praise you, to seek you, to find your word that nourishes uh, our souls in Jesus' name. So this morning, let's, uh, let's join together as we uh, sing the great old hymn of the church, Oh, for a thousand tongues to sing.
So uh, that was a bit of a traditional start to our service. I hope that, uh, that those of you younger will appreciate the traditions of the church. That's a great old Wesleyan hymn. I want to share with you this morning, uh, well, a couple of things really. Firstly, to tell you, to update you on the Sunlink Housing Association. And uh, then, then I'm going to talk to uh, Graham Semple and just get some insights into his ministry as a regional pastor and uh, Baptist Union Victoria. Sunlink is, is actually the name now uh, that we've given. Sunlink Housing Association Incorporated is the name given to the organization that's been formed to um, um, work with homeless people within Sunbury. And we um, have been doing this now for, um, well, it goes back to the winter shelter days of last year and the preparations before that. But um, coming into this year, we just felt there was an opportunity to set up some homes for the homeless and begin a process of, of uh, yeah, just acquiring homes and, and giving people a chance for stability in accommodation. Often people who don't have good rental records, haven't been able to establish themselves, uh, don't normally get accepted when they apply for, for housing, that Sunlink would step into that gap, cushion the blow a bit, and, and provide opportunity and, and trust with landlords. So that's, that's been our, 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 our program this year. As I go down uh, and look at uh, how many people we've been able to help in the last uh, six months since we started this in February, um, some of them have been very short term. Uh, some are still with us and, and we're still looking after them in, in some of the homes. <clears throat> and some we've only just started. Um, I'll show you those homes in a minute. There's a, there's a bit of footage that I'd like to show you. But just to say thank you to those of you who are supporting Sunlink and praying for it. Um, it, isn't, uh, it isn't sort of a profitable business at all. It's not something we've gone into thinking, uh, oh, yes, we'll recoup the money and people will pay their rent and everything will be, be fine. It is a messy business, and yet it's an important business. It's, a, it's something that we believe in and would not have been able to do what we're doing if people had not been uh, generous in their giving and also uh, in their prayer support. So we've had some very generous uh, donations, and uh, all I can say is that that's the way God has provided, and we're still looking for that uh, provision that God makes to this particular need. Uh, without me saying any more, uh, let me just take you to that uh, little little bit of a tour that uh, that I did the other day and and show you um, Sunlink in action. We began in uh, February with one house uh, that was meant to be a shared house for people who were homeless. And uh, as we began that journey, pretty soon uh, another house opened up and we were able to place four people in that house. And again, that was uh, sort of early March. Uh, that's uh, now occupied again uh, with different people. And it's been great as part of Sunlink Housing Association Incorporated uh, to be looking to help the homeless people. Just this last week, we were able to secure uh, the tenancy on another house uh, that uh, has three um, men in it. And uh, that's part of uh, Sunlink's uh, commitment to the homeless. Um, another house that we're looking at as a future prospect. And uh, yeah, we're just sort of working our way through what does it mean to be an association? What are our policies? How do we house people and look after them? So we appreciate your prayers as we go forward and uh, look after homeless people within Sunbury. So there's just a brief tour of uh, uh, three occupied homes at the moment. And the fourth one that you saw there um, is a maybe. We're, we're still in negotiation with that one. So um, the, the next thing I want to share with you is uh, I had a chat with Graham Semple uh, during the week. And uh, out, of that, out of that talk came his offer to, to share this message that he had prepared. And I just uh, uh, thought it'd be great to hear from him. And then I asked him, would you bring a greeting to Sunbury Baptist Church and just have this chat? So 
Um, without any uh, further ado, let's go to that interview with, uh, with Graham. So uh, welcome, Graham. Good to have you with us. Thank you. Good to be with you today. So just for folks who may not have met uh, Graham Semple, Graham is uh, one of the regional ministers of the Baptist Union of Victoria. He happens to be my regional minister from the, the outer northwestern metro area for, uh, for, for Baptist uh, pastors. So uh, my go-to person within the Baptist Union. And uh, yeah, so Graham, welcome. Welcome to Sunbury Baptist Church family gathering uh, via Zoom, obviously, via, via, not at Zoom, via YouTube that we have on Sunday morning. Look, thank you so much for inviting me to be part of your service today, Paul. And it's a joy to reconnect and uh, catch up. We go back some time um, and have got lots and lots of memories of uh, the past. But in this new season, uh, and we have different roles. And uh, I just want to personally bring greetings to uh, Sunbury Baptist from the Baptist Union, from Daniel Bullock. Uh, we want you to know that we're praying for you and the work and the ministry that you personally are engaged in uh, through this complicated season that we're presently in at the present time. Um, but it is a joy for me to be invited to come and, uh, and open God's word to you this morning, which you will actually get after this recording. And um, you'll see that it's, it's, it's the first opportunity that I've had uh, to engage in speaking to, uh, to a camera without any particular audience, which is very, very different to... Uh, my, my normal presentation. But I know that the word that I have for you this morning is a word in season. Uh, we're all going through difficult times at this time, a time of adjustment, a time of uncertainty, because we just really don't know how long this season is going to last. A time of lockdown. Uh, you are limited and restricted to what you can do. And uh, you've got to remember uh, to take your mask every time you go out. Um, just the other day, I went and had some myo treatment and also I had a haircut. First time I've had a haircut with a mask on. And it's quite an experience and uh, it's something to uh, look forward to if you go to the hairdresser. Um, not many of us have been uh, loving the experience of getting tested either. And it's just created a lot of uncertainty in our lives. But I know that the word that I have for you this morning will be a source of great encouragement to you. Yeah. It's powerful words. And uh, I pray that as you listen to the words that, uh, that I will share with you, they will be a source of great encouragement. They will be a source of comfort. And uh, they will be a blessing to you and, uh, and your lives as you journey through this time of uncertainty. Graham, as you get around with, uh, through the Baptist Union and mix with other churches and pastors, what, what are the, what's, what's happening out there? What are the, what are the kinds of, challenges and things that other churches are facing and how they're going and you know what just what's happening in the wider family in other words and yeah, uh, Paul that's a great question because what we're finding is that a lot of our pastors they're in uh, new territory this isn't what they were trained to do and so they're actually having to lead from a different perspective and they've had to learn new new new, new tools they've had to learn new resources uh and the way to present uh, a message to their congregations and to pastor their congregations in a very different way than they've ever been even trained to do. A lot of, of our pastors are very, very tired. Uh, there's a sense of um, doing more than they've ever done before. And so our responsibility is to ensure that they're, they're in good health and strength. Now, in the midst of all of this, what we're finding is that more people are actually listening in. More people are actually connecting. There's a sense of people searching for something and they're connecting into the church to see if they, if they can find answers and encouragement. I'm greatly encouraged by a number of our churches that are doing a lot of different ways of connecting with their people, but not just with their people. They're actually connecting with their community. A lot of people are connecting with their neighbors and building up rapport and relationship like they've never done before. Other people are looking at ways by which they can support and encourage others. Um, and uh, it's just a, it's a matter of varied ways of doing it. It's, it. 
it has created a lot of complications because a lot of people are under a lot of stress within our congregations um, with regarding the job uncertainty. Will they have a job when they actually go finish this season of COVID-19? Uh, there's great support from the government, which we've really valued and appreciated. We at the Baptist Union are operating very, very differently as well. All of us are, are operating from our home. As you can see, I'm in my study uh, today. And all of us are operating from, from our home. I'm privileged in one sense to be out of the metro area. Uh, I actually live in Geelong, which gives me a little bit of more freedom than those in the metro area, uh, which means I can go out. Uh, but I'm still limited and restricted. And in these limited and restricted ways, uh, the aspect of connecting to people is really, really important. Ensuring that their mental health and, uh, and their emotional health and well-being is being catered for. A lot of our churches are, are, are very much aware of this. Some of our uh, rural churches, uh, they just can't wait to get back. And they haven't actually been able to think through maybe some of the strategies that may be different when we return. Um, and that's been very difficult for them. So when you're praying, uh, it's important to be conscious of what's going on in our, other, in our other churches so that we're supporting and encouraging them to be thinking differently. Mm. This is an opportunity, Paul, for us to rethink what it means to be the church. Um, and particularly outside of the building uh, facilities, um, I was having a conversation with my staff today, and we were talking about this very issue, the issue of what does it mean to be the church and what does it mean to be doing mission? And so we've, a lot of our churches are rethinking these sorts of things. So it's raised, this season has created a lot of questions and a lot of rethinking and beginning uh, strategies of planning. What will it look like beyond this season? Mm. Graham, just in terms of your personal well-being and so forth, how can we as a church be praying for you and your wife, Joanne, and uh, how is it going for you? Can we be upholding you before the Lord? Oh, look, absolutely, and I appreciate that. Just uh, this week, at the beginning of this week, I got a phone call from a church that I'd been visiting, and we, I'd been in a room where somebody had been uh, tested uh, positive, which meant that we then had to isolate and we normally have a routine on Wednesdays where we're looking after our grandchildren. With regarding our family dynamics, uh, on, by the way, we went and got tested. We came up negative, which we praise God for. Um, but certainly in light of our mental health and well-being, um, because we're operating from, from home, when we're looking after our grandchildren, because uh, my son and my daughter both have three little kids each, and uh, the dynamic of the stress on them at homeschooling um, and for us to be available to them emotionally um, and often physically as well. So we would personally be valuing your prayer as we, as we journey through that, of supporting our family through this time. That would be the specific area. But wisdom for me as I uh, make contact to pastors and understanding where they're at and what what they're needing and looking and praying for them. So just uh, uh, certainly praying for me for wisdom in light of supporting our pastors. We look forward to the word that you've got in your heart. And I'm sure despite all of the, you know, uh, different environments we're in and the way in which you present, it's the word of God that really gets through. So we look forward uh, we to praise him. Yep. Thank you. Thank you, Graham. So I wonder if you would join me now in a time of prayer. Um, for those two things that we've just uh, been sharing, uh, Sunlink Housing or um, Homes for the Homeless, and uh, also for Graham, uh, his wife Joanne, and um, for the work of the Baptist Union Victoria. And then obviously we, we need to be praying for some other folks, especially our Premier, who's under enormous pressure at the moment, our health officers, uh, teachers, nurses, uh, other frontline workers in terms of uh, this COVID-19 uh, pandemic. So I wonder if you would just join me now as we pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for your goodness to us. We thank you for the provision for our needs, that when we come to you, that we know that we have our needs met uh, in Christ. We're reminded of the psalmist's words, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. 
It makes me lie down in green pastures. So we thank you, Father, for, you, for your many provisions for us and the ways in which you supply all of our needs. Help us to be conscious of the ways in which you would use us to meet the needs of others. That part of their supply is what you've put in our hands, whether it's accommodation or food uh, or clothing uh, or financial support, whatever it may be, Father, and especially that message of the gospel, that message of hope and, and of faith and of love in Jesus' name. So, Father, help us to be willing to share with others all that you've given to us. We pray for the work of Sunlink Housing Association, for every person that's been touched by the, uh, the ministry of Sunlink this, this particular year as we've started, for those who are part of the committee and all of those, Father, who support, who encourage, who who pray for and are working towards um, caring for the homeless, especially for those uh, volunteers and for Chris Prosser, who's been involved with um, Sunbury Winter Shelter and that ongoing compassion, concern and cooperation with, with uh, meeting the needs of the homeless. We pray for those who are still struggling today, who don't have a home, who in this cold, cold weather that we've been going through uh, don't have shelter. So we pray for them, Father. We pray that we might be able to work with uh, each other and with other organisations and uh, with government organisations and funding to be able to provide uh, better homes and more homes for those in need. We pray for um, Graham Semple, for his wife Joanne. We thank you for them as a couple in ministry and their regional role and especially Graham as uh, perhaps curtailed now in this in this time where he's restricted living in Geelong, perhaps a little bit more freedom than some of us in Melbourne, but still not able to uh, go where he would like to go and face to face, meet with pastors and encourage them and, and sit with them. But thank you that he's still faithful in this particular uh, season of our life together. And we pray that you would help him to have um, uh, discernment and wisdom uh, prompting of your Holy Spirit to, to ring someone, to make contact. Uh, I thank you personally for the word of encouragement this week from him. I know that there are many pastors who appreciate just that phone call uh, from someone who knows what it's like to be uh, in ministry and on the forefront of, of what's happening at the moment. So thank you for, for Graham. Bless the work of the Baptist Union in its uh, wider work for Daniel Bullock and for all of the team at the Hub the Baptist Union. We pray, Father, that you would, as they're separated now, working from home, uh, that their communication and their cooperation together as a team would be held together by the, the goodwill that they have for each other and by the work of your Holy Spirit. Father, we lift up our Premier, um, Daniel Andrews, who's under such pressure at the moment, criticism from every angle. Um, and yet, Father, he has a wife and children to go home to too. He's a father and a husband. Uh, he's just a man. And yet he's been placed in the position he has as premier of this state. And for whatever criticism may be leveled against him, Father, we pray that he'll be upheld at this time. We pray that he'll be strengthened. We pray that there will be people who will love him in the name of Jesus Christ, who will love and support and encourage him to do his job to the very best that he can, to not let past mistakes or past failures or disappointments or discouragements or the lack of of diligence of others become something that destroys what he can do now. Help us as a, as a state, as a community in Victoria, under such pressure from all around us, who other states of Australia who don't have the problems we do. We're isolated, we're, we're cut off from them and from family in other states. Father, this is a burden to us. But we pray through this time that we will both uh, turn our hearts to you for help, not just expecting the government to have policies. Lord, this is a plague. This is a pandemic. This is a virus. And we pray against it. We pray against its impact. We pray for all those who, uh, whose businesses will be lost, not just for six weeks, but will not be able to start again. For those who are struggling financially now and those who will in the future. For a whole economy, Father, that's taken such, uh, such a blow, such a negative downturn because of the events that are taking place. And Father, just now in the midst of the war against a virus that's invisible and yet deadly, where loved ones are dying every, every day, 
Father, we pray for those on the forefront of care. We think of the doctors and nurses in intensive care units, in, in wards where there's COVID patients. And Lord, we pray for those uh, medical staff who are infected at the moment. And whether it's uh, asymptomatic or whether they're suffering, Father, uh, for them it means isolation, it means they can't work, it means their families can't interact with them. And we pray for them, we uphold them before you, and we ask you, uh, Lord, to bring healing quickly to them. And Father, we pray for those who, uh, apart from anything to do with COVID-19, are going through difficulties and going through times where uh, their health is under pressure. Uh, we've been praying, Lord, for different people and um, some father in frailty in, in old age, some father who are recovering from, from strokes and from operations. And uh, Lord, we name them before you, our loved ones, our friends, the people that, that we know in our hearts and have been praying for. We just lift them to you. And uh, Father, we just ask you that you would uh, watch over these folk who are near and dear to us. And Father, in the midst of uh, such a tragedy that's taken, a, uh, taken its toll in the COVID-19, we suddenly are confronted with the tragedy in Lebanon. And Father, just to see such devastation and again, recrimination for who's responsible and so forth. But Lord, we just pray for healing, healing for people whose, whose bodies are broken. And Father, we pray that you will somehow bring good out of this that there would be a, a, a reformation, a political reformation and a, and a healing father within, within that nation, not only from this disaster, but from what would lead to it and what has led up to it. Father, we pray for peace, peace that passes all human understanding. We pray that this war-torn country will find a new hope and new life. Lord, turn it to good for them, we pray, in, in some way. For those, Father, who are mourning loved ones who are lost, we pray that you'll comfort them. For those, who, Father, whose lives hang in the balance now, we pray that you'll touch each one of them. Father, bring healing to this, uh, to this city uh, of, of Beirut. And Lord, we pray that all of those affected uh, might work together to overcome this tragedy. In all these things, Father, we acknowledge that you are our King, our Lord, our Master, the one who is sovereign. And we give you all the praise and glory for the fact that you are uh, in control, that you will bring good out of things as people turn to you. And uh, we trust you in Jesus' name. Amen. As we think about all those things in life which are tragic and disastrous and, and weigh heavily on us, this next song uh, speaks of the sovereignty of God, who is like you in all the earth and your presence is heaven to me. Let's make this a personal commitment as we think about, as we meditate on those things, let's lift our hearts to the Lord and, and draw into his presence where our strength comes from. Uh, and out of that presence of the Lord, know that we have the strength to face each day and each challenge. Let's make this an act of worship. like you, Lord, in all the earth, matchless love and beauty, endless word, but nothing in this world will satisfy, Jesus, you're the cup that won't run dry, your breath. Is heaven to me? Oh God, your presence is heaven to me. You're the treasure of my. Yo! No. 
is on earth, I will away. The moment that I see you face to face. Nothing in this world will satisfy. Jesus, you're the cup that won't run dry. Nothing. This world will satisfy. Oh, Jesus, Jesus, you're the cup that won't run dry. My name is Graeme Semple and I'm a regional pastor with the Baptist Union of Victoria. I want to bring greetings to you from Daniel Bullock and the BUV Hub who regularly pray for you that you as a church would be able to flourish and be a great witness to the, of the Kingdom of God in, uh, in your community. Um, it's a joy for me to join you this morning and uh, I look forward to bringing you God's Word. And I pray that it will be a word in season for you in light of all the things that you're experiencing and the changes that are going on in our lives and in our society. This present season of COVID-19 is something that was sprung upon us. No one could see it coming and no one can actually see where it might end just this week. Um, the thought of reconnecting with people was uh, certainly on there and the plans were getting uh, into action but then uh, the Victorian government had to clamp down and keep the present restrictions in place. It's been a bit sad in regarding that. All around the world this season has been one of a great disruption. A disruption to work, a disruption to family, a disruption to society and business, a disruption to worship. It's been a complete disruption to all aspects of life and uh, it's, it's been quite exhausting in all of these things. Uh, this disruption has caused a lot of stress, a lot of tension, a lot of anxiety in regarding this. It's what I call also the great equalizer. It's not based upon race or age or stage or uh, gender. It's totally indiscriminate in the way that it impacts people's lives. Uh, just recently, both my wife and I had to go and get tested. And I must say, <laughs> it wasn't the most pleasant of experiences. This disruption has not all been bad, and we give thanks to God for the new discoveries that have come, particularly in the area of Zoom and uh, social media uh, like Facebook, 
and YouTube have enabled people to be able to work at home, have enabled people to be able to connect with family and friends, uh, even overseas. It's been, it's been a wonderful resource that has been there. But at the same time that it's been a wonderful resource, people are quite zoomed out. Uh, it's a new term that they use, uh, being over Zoom. And, and people are tired of just meeting on, on the social media. And so they're quite exhausted. This disruption has also caused pastors to be more busier than they've ever been. And, uh, and they're having to look at new ways of communicating and keeping in contact with their people and ensuring that discipleship and, and ministry is continuing on. It is into this context that I believe that Jesus wants to speak to us in the midst of our tiredness, in the midst of our weariness. All of us, in one way or another, are pretty tired and weary. And it's into this that Jesus wants to speak to us today from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 11, verses 28 to 30. He provides four words or four instructions that he wants to give to us that will bring about refreshing and renewal and rest. Let me read to you what Jesus actually says. And I pray that as we get into this today, it'll be a source of great encouragement and be a source of refreshment to you as you cooperate with what God is saying to us today. He says in his word, Come to me, all you who are weary and heavy burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. The first instruction that we see is to everyone who is tired and weary and, and heavy burdened. The context of where Jesus is speaking is most likely related to people who were wanting to get right with God, who were wanting to worship God, who were really wanting to please God, but they, they were trying in all sorts of different ways. But the system, the religious systems of the day were quite overwhelming. And even for those that were teaching and lecturing in it, the law and the requirements of the law were very, very, very demanding. The sacrificial system and the requirements and the pressure of the system put so much pressure on people. It wasn't just about a relationship with God. It was more about doing the right thing or seeming to be doing the right thing. In this context, we know that Jesus entered into this season and the Pharisees, who were wanting to please God, but they were wanting to put pressure on a lot of other people, came and they questioned Jesus because he seemed to be living life differently or doing things differently to how they interpreted the law, particularly laws relating to the Sabbath, laws relating to uh, relationships, uh, eating. All of these things uh, were questioned of Jesus by the Pharisees. It is into this particular context that even you and I, in our own traditions and our own experience, have have unwritten laws and expectations of ourselves as well as other people. And we endeavor to impress them upon other people. At least that's what we've done in the past. It is here that we are all tired. We're all weary and overwhelmed. And that Jesus comes and he speaks his first word or instruction. And the first word is, come, come to me. It's not come to a set of laws or a set of instructions or a set of rules. It's come to a person, come to uh, an intimate relationship, come to Jesus. And as a result of coming, he says, I will give you rest. I will give you refreshment. I will give you renewal. Come to him. It's not the first time that Jesus actually expresses this statement of come. We see this also in the passage of Matthew 19, 14, where the disciples were preventing children from coming to him. And he says, let the little children come to me. Again, he, he speaks these words, similar words, when he's in the temple and he's speaking on the great day of the feast and he stands up in front of everybody and he yells at the top of his voice, let anyone who is thirsty come to me. There's something about coming to Jesus that transforms one's life and transforms one's 
thinking. It's, he brings about this refreshing way of thinking about life and doing life. Recently, I found a poem that expresses these thoughts and the tension of responding to the, to the invitation. Let me read it to you. Father, it's called the invitation. Father, your personal invitation to me is to come. But although I receive it and even recall, other things are calling out to be done. The demands of people, both one and all. Even the expectations of an inner voice are screaming out loud and often drown out the still, small sound. And that's by choice, to listen to the cries instead of the one who wears the crown. You are the Lord, and I must confess that life is not what people expect it to be. And without you, my life is but a mess. Until I turn and return to you and eventually see that you are still there calling me to come. So, Father, I, I come to you to find that with you I am always at home and, like Jesus, will only respond as you want me to. Speak, Father. Your servant is listening and willing. Touch my life so that others will always know the life of Jesus through me, reflecting, so I entrust my life for you to bestow. I wrote that in 1998 when I was going through an interesting time of fullness of life and God got my attention. And I pray that he'll get your attention and you will respond to his invitation to you today of come, all you are weary and heavy burdened. Well, the second word or instruction is take. Take my yoke upon you or take my yoke. After responding to the invitation of coming to Jesus, of entering into a personal relationship with him, he instructs you to take something up, a yoke. Not just any yoke. His yoke. A yoke is a purpose-designed apparatus a, a, used mainly on oxen, but could be used on donkeys or horses for the purpose of work, plowing or pulling a cart. The plan was to attach two animals together so that they could work together in partnership with each other. A number of years ago, my, my father-in-law my, my father uh, gave me a very special gift of this yoke. It was actually given to him by Don Miller, who was a pastor and minister from Texas, USA, doing a ministry called the Prayer Video Ministry. And uh, during his season of ministry, he had made a lot of these to give to pastors so that they would always remember the ministry of what he brought and particularly on this particular passage of scripture getting in the yoke you, you can see that it's designed in a particular way and uh, in light of how it's designed the animal is actually measured up before the uh, yoke is actually made and it's specially fitted to the animal's particular needs so that when Jesus invites you and I to, to get in the yoke with him, you need to understand that it's been purposely designed with you in mind. We all have different sizes and me measurements. When you get in the yoke with Jesus, it is purposely fitted for you. The initial idea of getting or taking up his yoke is quite foreign, and there are some adjustments or a lot of adjustments depending on the situation. But as Don Miller used to say, when you get in the yoke with Jesus, you only go in one direction. His. When you get in the yoke with Jesus, you only carry one load. His. When you get in the yoke with Jesus, you're not alone. He is with you all the time. When you get in the yoke with Jesus, you won't fail or fall. For he supports you. Frederick Dale Bruner states, A yoke is a work instrument. Thus, when Jesus offers a yoke, he offers what we might think uh, for tired workers lead, le need least. It's an oxymoron. <laughs> they need a mattress. They need a vacation. Not a yoke. But Jesus realizes that the most restful gift he can give the tired is a new way to carry life 
a fresh way to bear responsibilities. Realism sees that life is a succession of burdens. We cannot get away from them. Thus, instead of offering escape, Jesus offers equipment. Jesus means that the obedience to his Sermon on the Mount, his yoke, will develop us in a balance and a way of life, of carrying life, that will give more rest than the way we have been living. This is a fresh way of understanding what Jesus' instruction is. And as we get in the yoke with Jesus, we experience renewal, refreshment, rest. Have you taken up the yoke? Are you getting in the yoke with him? Or are you running your own life, your own way? He invites you to come. He invites you to take up his yoke and work and partner with him. I encourage you today, if you haven't done that, to get in the yoke with Jesus. The third word or instruction that Jesus gives to us is learn. Learn from me. Once you get in his yoke and are joined with him, he wants you to learn from him. The concept here again was that when two oxen were chosen to share a yoke, one of them was the older, seasoned, fully trained, equipped ox in the routine of what needed to be done. He'd experience. The other, the second, was a young, new ox. He had the potential but is inexperienced. By sharing the same yoke with the veteran workhorse, the elder trains the younger and helps develop its potential so that eventually he can be used to train others. This is a beautiful picture of discipleship where Jesus instructs his disciples to follow him, to learn from him, to imitate him, to do what he is doing and then go and do this for others. Go and make disciples. The learning process is a journey. It's not an event. It's a process. It takes time and energy. And we make mistakes. And Jesus knows this. It means observing, watching, listening, and then imitating. We all learn from someone, whether it be good or bad habits that we have. We've learned them somewhere from someone. We've learned them from parents or teachers, pastors, friends, mentors. But here Jesus is clearly instructing us, in spite of all the people that we can learn from, he says, come and learn from me. Watch me. Develop from me. And implement a way of life that will reflect my way of life. And we do that by studying his life in the Gospels. We do that by praying and connecting with him and learning from others who have been on the journey a longer time than we have. We are studying uh, his way of life and then implementing his way of life into our way of life. It is you come to do this, that you come and experience the fourth instruction or the fourth word. The fourth word or instruction is find. You will find rest for your souls. It isn't an instruction, really. It's an outcome. It's the result of applying all the other three instructions and that you come to the new discovery. The light goes on. You become aware and you're enlightened. You have an overwhelming sense of knowing and experiencing rest, refreshment and renewal and peace. And this peace is something that Paul talks about in Philippians chapter 4 and verse 7, which states, And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, no one can fully appreciate or understand it, will guard your heart and your mind, your, your emotions and your thinking. The areas where we are attacked and where it's all going on all the time. The peace of God that passes all understanding will guard your heart and your mind. And then this key phrase, in Christ Jesus. The reality is we experience peace when we're in tune, when we're in step 
with what Jesus is doing, when we're in the yoke with Jesus, when we're keeping in tune with what Jesus is doing, often we're, when we've stepped out of fellowship with Jesus Christ, we become restless and burdened and overwhelmed. But when we get back into the yoke, we experience that rest and refreshment. This rest is the sure confidence that no matter what is going on in our families, our world, our society, our workplace, or even internally, we come to that place of understanding God is still in control. I think the great example of this was when Jesus went with his disciples in the boat and he says, let's go to the other side. And while they were crossing to the other side, he fell asleep and a storm came up. And in Mark's gospel, it, it reads that they woke him up and they said, don't you care that we drowned? Immediately, Jesus gets up. He rebukes the wind and he tells the waves to be still. And the peace came upon that whole place and they were overwhelmed by his presence. Jesus knew he, this was not his time. And in this, when we're going through turmoil and, t and times of testing, which we all do, we need to know that God is with us and that will help us and guide us. He says, when you go through the fire, you won't be burned. When you go through the waters, you won't drown because he's with us. And that's what it means to be in the yoke. And that's what it means to experience an overwhelming sense of rest and refreshment and renewal. And even a new way of thinking, often that's what takes place. And so today, I want to encourage you to respond to, the, to Jesus' words. Come if you're overwhelmed and burdened and you're needing rest. Take up his yoke upon you. Get in and watch him and learn from him. And then discover and find refreshment, renewal, and rest for your soul. As you hear the message today, and if you're tired and weary and overwhelmed and heavy burden, I invite you to respond to him. To implement his words to come, take, learn, and find life for your soul. Right where you are, and respond to his invitation to come. Take up his yoke, learn from him, and find in him the true rest he offers. If this is you today, please let your pastor know so that he can pray and encourage you. Let's pray. Lord, you know we are all tired and weary, and some of us are heavy burdened by life's experiences. We come to you because you invite us to receive rest, refreshment, and renewal. Thank you for who you are and for what you have done. We come to you in gratitude that you accept us as we are. I pray that you would right now overwhelm us with your love, grace, and peace. As we get in the yoke with you, lead us and guide us. We submit to you and your way of life. May your peace rest upon us now and give us rest and refreshment to live out a renewed life. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. May the Lord bless you as you receive this word and implement his word into your own life that you may be rested, refreshed and renewed. God bless. Do you feel the world is broken? Do you feel the shadows deepen? Do you know that all the dark won't stop the light from getting through? Do you wish that you could see it all made new? Is all creation groaning? creation coming yeah. is the glory of the Lord to be the light within our midst yeah. is it good that we remind ourselves of this
Is he worthy? Is he worthy?